So guys, end of October. Only means one thing. We all know what that means. <laughs> yeah. Black Friday. Yes, Black Doomsday. Friday, Cyber Monday. And in Europe, Black Friday week. In the US, it's only Black Friday. Yeah. Because yeah, in, in the US, it's a thing, yeah. right? In the US, it's um, after Thanksgiving, you have Black Friday. Yeah. In Europe, we have no Thanksgiving. Those who do only Black Friday, it's only a sales. It's exactly. No meaning at all here. And <laughs> <laughs> but only discounts and sales. And most web shops, most companies start a week before. I yeah. mean, I must say, like, technically, last three days was Click Frenzy, which is the Black Friday in Australia. So that just stopped today. Then we get Singles Day, the 11th of November. Yeah. Technically, also just a glorified Black Friday, and then of course we get Black Friday itself, Cyber Monday, and uh, the whole craziness through Christmas. So it's basically uh, one discount after another. Yeah. Yeah, what you see it will be more spread. The cost, uh, consumers wait and 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 pick their sales. Exactly. The, the one moment is away online, especially here in Europe. You don't see okay, five six years ago, yet one day Black Friday was amazing, and now you have what you say, Singles Day, you have Cyber Monday, and it's just the hype. You it's, know, it's one month of sales. Because yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, t- technically it's obviously for, for the consumer, you know, they think, oh, sales, sales. But I think just, well, of course, was a discount day where you basically gave back to your customers. But nowadays it just seems like, I mean, in all honesty, it's just almost a way just to clear your inventory. Yeah, you just exactly. want to, you know, clear out the, the warehouse for all the new stuff. Yes, if you're a smart entrepreneur, yes, you use it as, as a clear <laughs> yes, sale exactly. and, and, don't, and don't burn your, uh, your best sellers uh, mm-hmm. at a discount. Yeah. So yeah, it's just, I think it's a lot of planning there where I mean, every year there's still people who don't seem to get that. You know, like I, every year I see, you know, the big companies that they ask, like, why is the best seller not on sale? Well, because it's the best seller, you know, it's so obvious. Why would you give away margin on something that's already selling? I think that that's where you can also make the, the biggest gains from that perspective. But then, it's, hey, it's always a great opportunity as well to attract new customers to a business. Because obviously with, with the discount being there, more people are willing to potentially invest in your product, in whether that be clothing, whatever it is. And give it a try, because obviously it's you know lower lower cost to them. Yes, yes, I think it Black Friday is two things. First, of course, getting the sale. If that's not possible, getting an elite, an email address, a phone number. Yes. So mm-hmm. you can sell them later. That's the only goal you have on, on mm-hmm. Black Friday. Yeah. But yeah, I would 100% always advise like keep it simple though. So every year I see it again where people go crazy. It's like hey, buy one this, buy two that, buy three this. You know they go crazy with the discounts. Keep it simple. Just yeah. say hey, you know here's 20% off, 30% off. Or even better, just pre-mark the website. Like close it a day or an hour for whenever you want to go live. Pre-mark the prices how you want it. Like yes. we said, you know, hey, high inventory, not selling, high discount, boom, yeah, yes. publish yeah, it. Clo- close the website that works for brands, it really works. But for a small entrepreneurs, it's quite scary to, to close. Mm. Uh, shut down a website, maybe it <laughs> doesn't go online. Uh, after that, it's, it's a scary uh, moment to do. But what you say, keep it simple. I always suggest to create a, just a Black Friday page and exactly all your sales on one page, not too many. Um, yeah, and to keep it simple. Yeah, and then from an agency perspective, what would you guys? Because obviously, we all feel as agency owners as well, we need to make sure that all of our clients get the best results. Um, like, what what is what is the whole Black Friday period? How, how do you guys experience S- scheduling? It? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's yeah, the most uh, important Because it's like technically in, in itself, it's not that big of a thing because you've already done the majority before it. Yeah. Like at least for me, they're not a whole lot changes because it's not like that magically you're going to do something different, you know? Because no. it's like your, what's kind of working now, let's say in October, like you're going to kind of put forward the same creatives exactly on, on Black Friday, but you just change up the copy. Yeah. You know, it's like if you have to go and test new things during Black Friday, it's never, it's you know, it's chaos. Exactly. Yeah. So you just look what's working now. I mean, you can easily put a Black Friday sticker on it, so to say, and it would already work. Yeah. Because like all people need to know is like, this is the item, this is what's on sale, and do that's they need a discount. code or not? Yeah. And put it out there, you yeah. know? Because obviously that's what we discussed during console text as well, right? One of the questions that we got was, what kind of creatives work best during Black Friday? And both of our answers were, the creatives that work best all year <laughs> round. Exactly. Just use those for Black Friday, because those are proven to work. And if they work in a normal capacity, they'll work in a Black Friday capacity as well. The only thing you need to do then is change the copy. And then like you said, you just need to make it clear to the customer or the consumer um, whether or not they need to use a discount code. And then from an agency perspective, I'd always recommend just having a discount code either automatically um, apply that checkout or in the announcement bar of the store so that you don't need to constantly change up your ads every single time. You know, it's Black Friday, it's Cyber Monday, exactly. etc. Yeah, and that's also a tip I would give to anyone like, if you go and do a different deal every day, that is fine. But 
like you you cannot uh, plan that out with ads. No. Like you cannot run an ad for 24 hours yeah, and, and keep you, switching. You need more time with ads, you need more yes. time. Yeah. Like yeah. you need at least a, a seven day leeway. That That's me saying though, like it's it's not that you then not shoot a separate, do a separate deal, but that needs to be clearly communicated in the banner everywhere on the website, because then you can just keep the ads flowing. And then once they're on the site, they can see it. Yeah. But you do want to have like just kind of like a deal that runs the whole, whole weekend, uh, the whole day, like whatever it is. Because then that's what you can basically uh, advertise on. Yeah. Then the special deals, kind of like you know what what people always like to call you know those deal, deals of the day. That's perfect. But then if they're on the site, they can see it and done. And that's how I would always keep it. Yeah. Otherwise, it just gets too uh, it gets too hard. Because I see it everywhere again. There's always one who basically doesn't really take the advice. And obviously, all all fairness to them, you know, they're the business owner. I can just only tell you what I see that's working. And then if I look after Black Friday, it's always the ones who kept it simple. Yeah. Same same discount. And maybe on Cyber Monday they did something special. But basically for the whole stretch, kind of the same game plan. They made by far the, the most money. money. Yeah. Also at the yeah. highest ROAS. We're yeah. like good yeah. margin. Whereas the ones who did every single day something different, you kind of have to conclude where it's like, hmm, I yeah. don't know if, if we should be satisfied with this. Then it all stems down to that. Yeah. Plus a lot of customers will then not know when to buy because they might buy on day one when on day two there might be a better yes. discount. So then what do they do? They just wait. And then before yeah. they know it, the whole period has ended. Yeah. And if you get emails from your customers afterwards that they missed the deal, then you know you did, you did something <laughs> yes. wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think the easiest test is like if you offer item A on a Friday for 50, and then on Cyber Monday, they can get it for 30. I can guarantee you everyone's going to buy it for 30 and they're going to return the 50. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just, you, yeah, exactly. that's the behavior you invoke by doing yeah. things like that. Yeah. Yes, it, it's really important to create an irres irresistible offer for your Black Friday. Keep it simple, but also do something nice. If you can create an offer that goes viral, for example, yeah. and by hitting a special price point or make a, a combination of products, uh, that can be really, really nice. And, and and what you can do, what I did uh, five, six years ago with an uh, OLED TV screens were super expensive. They, the cheapest version was maybe 2,000 euros. But I was thinking, okay, I can waste a lot of money in ads to get Black Friday traffic to my website. It's impossible to do. What if I do 10 or 15 other televisions for 999, less than 1,000 euros? It cost yeah. me 1,000 euros a screen, but it was only 10,000 euros on marketing spend. I was fired on every deal website. That's a good idea. Actually. I was fired mm -hmm. everywhere. I got the m highest exposure ever had because we were only 10K. I sold 10 screens for a low price and we were sold out. Yeah. And and that, what was the best deal we ever did? Just because making a price point that's not possible. Everyone, also, but if you do a price point with 10% discount and if you are in a high competitive market, um, maybe you're. Uh, your uh, competitors also giving 10% discount or 11% discount. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you make an extremely bold move, so uh, it, it, do it 50%, uh, 60, 70% discount, and, and it costs you money, but see that as a marketing budget. Only for a few items can attract a lot of customers and a lot of social engagement. Oh, it looks what's happening here. I can buy yeah. a TV mm -hmm. screen that's over, uh, maybe two, three thousand, and another shop and hits thousand here. So why is that possible? Yeah. So we got a lot of comments on social media with over thousands of reactions on group on uh, websites. That's super nice. Yeah. Only That's 10K. Smart. Yeah, just play yeah. it out of the box, you know. That's it. There's you the know, so many things you, you can come up with. Yeah. You know, I think it's just there. Because like mainly you know, with e-commerce, if you're like the majority of us going to be either selling clothing or, you know, some sort of physical item. Yeah. It's quite often what you're just going to get down on is you need making either an offer that's just easy for people to take up on or like really go down the bundle route. But again, of course, you, if you also go and do bundles, you need people to commit to that. Because if you, let's say, take uh, three items that weren't selling before and now you bundle them, it, quite often it won't work, you know? No, yeah, only, only, only com uh, make a combination of good deals, best sellers. Yes, and, exactly. And, and, and don't try to clear your, 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 your not moving stock with a bundle. That's, that's yeah. you know? a negative offer. What do you guys think of mystery boxes then? Because it, 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 mystery boxes yeah, is kind of getting rid of stock, right? Yes. But then it's wrapped up in like this. Like it's, yeah, I don't know. Like I, I would personally never buy a mystery box. No, so I think that's the main reason why I'm just not a big fan of it. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, yeah. It, it depends also on what... <laughs> I, I did it with electronics because and with only gadgets in it. And I think it's important if you do it, make an image or a photo what's, what's, what's always in the box. So people know that maybe 70% yeah, is 100% is clear you, you always get this. 
and there's some bonus in the box. Yeah. But for fashion, uh, it's, 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 it's a pain in the ass with, with, with exactly. returns from one item. It's not and, worth and, it. And that's also not possible. So in yeah. Europe, I don't suggest to do it because with all the regulations, with return it's loss. It's not worth it. The problem is consumers want to return one product of the gift, uh, uh, the mystery box. That's not possible. This, effort, this it's everything a, yeah, or, or nothing. nothing. Yeah, exactly. and, and, and that's, yeah. So it can be it can be working, but don't make it your main offer. No, exactly. I as a side like, offer, as long as it's like if try. it's something new, like if you're selling, uh, you know, like because the last one I did see what I really liked was what uh, Joel did. Like if you course give a mystery box, but you say specifically there's going to be three items in here, which is all pre-workout. Yeah. The only thing that's mystery is the flavor. The flavors, yeah. Like yeah. that's a perfect, perfect, amazing way to put the mystery box forward. But then technically, it's not mystery. You know, no. like I know you call it a mystery box, but it's something else. Yeah. Yeah. So I think something like that definitely would work. But for fashion, really, it has to be, you're giving either 10, 20, 30, whatever it is, percentage off. It just depends on your margin. Yeah. That's how you flow it. And then the choice is up to you. I would recommend not to do discount codes, pre-mark the site. So what's not selling high discount, what is selling really well, maybe very low percentage, or even say, don't even put them on sale. It's completely fine. If you're number one selling item, yeah. Yeah. why would you? You know, people are willing to pay the, the current amount, no need to give the discount. I do, of course, always say, a lot of people offer 10% off by signing up to the email list. So, hey, you know, technically they get 10% anyway. So you could just pre-mark those items with 10% because you're going to take away the email pop-up most likely anyway during the during the weekend. So that's how you can basically solve that. And yes. then, boom, put it out there. No code needed. Otherwise, people don't know. They go there, discount code. Where do I put the code? Does it work? Yeah. yeah and they Save uh, yourself ask all your customer stuff. service uh, <laughs> what, what, uh, for a refund. It's a, it's a hassle. Yeah. And what also can be a nice... Black Friday offer, but it's too late uh, to, to get it now in place, but I know a, a large store is doing, is creating an advent cal uh, calendar. Okay, it's yeah. a lot of work to do. We see the retailers doing it, uh, some large fashion yeah. brands are doing it. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's It takes some time to produce and, and make it great, but it's also sort of mystery box. Mm -hmm. and you, yeah. And, and that can be really nice for next year. <laughs> or you yeah. I can put one together by yourself, but it's a lot, a lot of work. But uh, it, um, we see really good sales. And you see that Ritual is expanding their lines with with um, uh, advent calendars every year. They have this year four or five different. Mm -hmm. The cheapest one is around 50 euros. It's most expensive, around 250 or something. And they sell uh, like crazy. I know I saw the numbers. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah and That's yeah. a good idea. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it's especially now is a lot of people are going to be shopping for Christmas, I think, during Black Friday. Like every year it's getting more and more. Where in the beginning I always felt like people didn't really think about it. Where now it's really, okay, let me get that deal now. So that's, of course, always something you can play in as well. Yeah. You know, like the, the, the part of, of giving. Like, hey, that's yeah. always an, an interesting like side sell or upsell that you can play into this. That will always work. But of course, again, it depends on the, the giveability of the item you're giving. But yeah, that's definitely something I would uh, advise people to not yeah. forget during uh, Black Friday. Yes, yes. Uh, most most people are shopping for to give some sort of present. Those fast free shipping can also be yeah. a really good discount. And so yeah. you don't discount your product. You only give free away fast free shipping for mm -hmm. orders above 100 euros, 100 US dollars. Uh, what suits your business. And, exactly. And, and, and that can be really good. We uh, have some... Uh, we did some tryouts uh, last uh, with Christmas in July with some uh, customers of us and only free shipping. And we were quite surprised how many orders we get. We got almost a Black Friday revenue. But yeah. Only free shipping was only what we did, free shipping. If the, like, if the timing is right, you know, because I always say is, I see like it's getting a bit less now. Of course, since COVID, just being able to offer next day delivery is just very hard. Mm -hmm. But if you are able to have something like that and... You know, there's maybe more if you go into, you know, December, like, you know, when Christmas is. So if you do an email, like a week out of Christmas, where you say, hey, okay, if you buy within the next 24 hours, next, next day delivery is on us. Yep. You know, like stuff like that. It's so easy to do. It yeah, doesn't yeah. eat into your margin mm -hmm. and it's, it's a guaranteed seller. Because yes. there's always anyone, they forget, oh, damn, okay, yeah, shit, what do I do? need to do? Boom, yeah. next free day delivery. Yeah, especially for holidays, it's free. Uh, sh fast shipping is important, but the only thing is you need to um, make it true. So don't rush exactly. your, uh, your warehouse if you cannot make it or your, yes. uh, or your delivery service. That's, that uh, will backfire uh, quite hard because if you promise a Christmas gift on Christmas and it's after Christmas, yes, it's not a Christmas gift anymore. Exactly. So yes, of course, it's something you need to uh, yeah, check out with your shipping provider there. But yeah, 
yeah. start that conversation now because they will tell you what the cutoff date is. They'll tell you what, what is workable and then boom, make yeah. an offer on that work with it. Yes, yes. and what I also sometimes see uh, in addition to that is that I s- now already see Christmas offers on some websites, yeah. but it's not explained why they do that. And I think if you have long lead times, explain it to your customer why you are having a Christmas sale Yes. and October. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't make sense. I was reading, I got an email last, yesterday, an email from a large uh, web shop with uh, last time to buy for Christmas. I think, what? <laughs> it's two months away. Yes. Uh, why? But they never, I, I know the business, so I know that they have, they have lead times. And it was not mentioned in their email, not mentioned on their sales page. So I think, okay, you need to clarify that to, m- to make sense. If you have a Christmas sale, uh, last time to order before Christmas, make it clear. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and I think probably like just how we can probably end the conversation is to do your own thing. Yeah. You know, like with Black Friday, it really comes down to who you look up to because a lot of businesses, of course, they look up to either a big competitor who they aspire to be or et cetera. And it's kind of the same with like ad creative because I think that's a perfect way how we can complain with each other. If I take, let's say, Louis Vuitton or Dior as an example, their ad strategy, they do not care what the ROAS is. They do not care if it's positive. They do not care if it's making money or not. There's one thing that counts, it's brand. Yeah. Like how do I put my brand into the market? How is it perceived? So if one creative doesn't produce any results, but it's the absolute best shot from the editorial, mm-hmm. I'm gonna put advertising spend behind it. Yeah, and they, can, they can afford to do that though. That's the one. That's the thing, yeah, because yeah. they have the luxury, luxury to do this. They have a yeah. marketing budget, this is what they spend. Now, of course, I'm not saying they don't look at results at all. Obviously, there is some sort of performance element there, but it is not the main driver. Black Friday is the same. Like if you're gonna look at, uh, let's say a Fashion Nova, mm-hmm. if you're gonna look at Forever 21, I don't even know if they exist anymore. <laughs> you know, like these companies, all they're gonna do now is they're most likely over leverage, too much inventory, inventory needs to go. They don't care if it sells at a loss. So if you go and follow that trajectory, you're gonna end up the same way. Do yeah. your own thing. You know your margins, calculate how much you can afford. That's what you should do. And yes. don't try to copy your competition because they have different numbers. And they also overproduce it. Eh? So that maybe yes. they, it looks like they maybe sell at, at lower margin, but they take the winning exactly. at the beginning. But they make, uh, where you are a small company, maybe order 100 pieces of an item. They order 100,000 pieces of an item for yeah. a super, super low price. So they can sell the last one for a few dollars. Yes, exactly. And you don't know what their strategy is. Like I always get the question, like the Black Friday sale is live, they offer 20% and then boom, Slack starts blowing up. Oh no, my competition is doing 30%. Say, well, maybe they want to take a loss because they play the lifetime value game. Or yeah. maybe they have too much stock they want to sell. You know, there's always different plays at yeah. factor. Or they just have bigger margins. Exactly. You know, yeah, so you they can afford it. Correct. So you just, you cannot compete with that. That's why you need to know your numbers. You need to know what you can allow with your margin to go and just set out your own game plan, set for it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's the goal. Sometimes I speak with uh, e-com owners and they just want to hit 1,000 orders in a day. That's their goal. It <laughs> yeah. doesn't make sense. No. I, I always tell them, okay, maybe you can be- have a better one order with a lot of margin and have a day off. <laughs> That's maybe better than, 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 than work the whole weekend. And, at exactly. month, and on Tuesday after Black Friday, you say, oh, Oh, we make a loss on the whole Yeah, like it's, it's, you know, it's, they all chase the glorified Shopify revenue screenshot. It doesn't say anything, you okay. know? Like like I said, margin is what counts. Based on that, you can calculate your mar- you know, your marketing efficiency ratio. And then you can say, okay, now we know how much we can spend. And then basically you've already won. Because yeah. you know guaranteed you're gonna make money. You know guaranteed everything you've checked out works. So all you need to do is just sit back and relax. Yeah. Yes, and if you're still, still struggling, we create a three hour course <laughs> exactly. for, for the holiday season with all the things you need to in three hours make an amazing offer for your Black Friday and Fire Monday. And uh, you can find it in Merchify and the link is somewhere in the description. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think to wrap it all up as well, I think one sort of gray hat tip, if you guys do do the calculations and you realize that, okay, you cannot compete margin wise or percentage of discount wise, you can also slowly increase your prices leading up to Q4. Obviously, it might yeah. be a bit late now by the time this goes out. But I've got quite a lot of clients that will literally just add an extra $5 every so often to all of their products so that they can go really big on the discounts during Black Friday without it obviously cutting into their margins too much. Exactly. Yes, yes you can do that. There are some regulations sometimes in place, especially in Europe, if you bump your prices before the holidays. Yeah, true. This, this check always your local regulations before you do that, but it can definitely work. Yes, yeah. of course. Yes, and don't forget to place a lead magnet. Eh? Get that leads. 
if they go to your website but yeah, don't buy, get their email address, get their yes. phone number so you can send, send them an offer later on. That's super important, I think. Exactly. Cool. That was Black Friday.